Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy, and I'm here to bring a message to you. Whatever time you come across this message, it's meant for you to see it. So, I was led, I'm being led, to bring a message of healing for those in who have been on this spiritual journey, those who have been on this soulmate, uh, twin flame journey, who have come to a place or realization or understanding that in actuality the person uh, that they may have thought was their twin flame, right, was not exa was not that person. That actually the person who is your divine counterpart could be a family member, could be a child. Okay, could that could be what um, some of you may have come to realize and that you haven't met the person that you are going to be in union with or you may never um, come into physical union with the person that you were meant to be with because they either passed away so you won't they've already transitioned over or that whatever the mission was has already been completed and um, you are free. You want to know if you're free to just, you know, go forward with your life, or you feel that. Um, so there are a few different questions. But first, what I wanted to do is I was told that you need to be acknowledged that you sh do feel like you've been fooled, that you do feel insecure about yourself, your intuition you do feel like you've been taken advantage of. Um, even though you're not supposed to feel this and you're supposed to look at yourself and what did you do, you've done all that work, you've been doing all that work. But there is still humanity, all right? You're still a human being. And so you may feel like you're not in, you know, you, you want to have a pity party for yourself, but you don't want to, uh, allow yourself to wallow in this energy because then you feel like you're bringing your vibration down and all that. Yes, all of that is true, but you have the right and the free will to tap into your human side as well as your spiritual side. So if you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like yelling, yell. If you feel like celebrating, celebrate. If you feel However it is that you feel, let yourself feel it. Allow yourself to feel all the feels that go along with it. Because you weren't spared any of the feels along the way, right? You, ha you have experienced every part of this journey, right? So you have the right to feel vindicated. You have the right to feel free. You have the right to feel sad. You have the right to feel lost. You have the right to feel confused. You have the right to feel uh, betrayed. You have the right to feel let down. You have a right to miss them. They have the right to miss you. There's nothing wrong with however way anyone feels. Some people could feel disappointed. Others could feel relieved. Others could feel hurt and in pain. Many of you feel that you've gotten your closure in different ways than you expected to. Um, and just this realization right now is your closure for yourself because what you needed to know, you come to find out however way it happened, right? you aren't feeling any, mm, I don't know, maybe some people, maybe some of you feel jealous, maybe some of you feel um, nothing. Maybe some of you feel that this is what you get, like maybe you feel like this is your karma. Some of you could feel that, right? So, for example, so let's see. I'm going to get energies right now and see what the head space is or see what the, um, yeah, how the 
the divine masculine is feeling and also how the divine feminine is feeling. Whoever it is that you believe that was your divine masculine, whoever they believe was their divine feminine, whoever this is, take it in. You know, whatever the sex is, make it fit how it fits. Whoever it is that you have believed up until now, what is there? Energy is the God of battle and the God of vulnerability. Aries, number six, and Achilles, number ten. Uh, and Thor, the God of action, came in the reverse. So basically, no, no movement. Nothing is, is moving for them. And they battle and vulnerability. You know, maybe for some of them they're feeling embarrassed. They feel like they got to defend themselves. They may feel like they've been exposed and they want to defend themselves. Okay. Okay, so they're feeling that, perhaps, and they could be feeling, for some of you, they feel like they want to fight for this relationship because they feel vulnerable in separation, for some of them, some of them, but they're not making any movement, so, they're not moving. Or, like I said, some of them might be just be trying to protect themselves. And that's why they're staying low. And that's why they're keeping away from you. Because maybe they realize the part that they had to play in this whole thing. And they may be afraid to come out of hiding. Okay. And that's how they're choosing to battle. That's how they're choosing to defend themselves. By... Jesus, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. Okay. Divine Feminine. All right, feeling a lot, are you? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's just see if we can just get two, if any. Let's just hit some energies that the Divine Feminine may be in regarding this situation at this time, regarding the way this has worked out or has worked out. at the end of this, at this stage, at this stage of this journey, in regards to this connection, this relationship, what is the divine feminine feeling, okay, wisdom and sensuality, so this is a four, wisdom, and two, Priya, sensuality. Athena is wisdom. Priya, goddess of sensuality. But she looks kind of cold here, right? Looking vulnerable within her sense, her sensuality. I I feel, and this is wisdom. Endurance at the bottom of the deck. Persephone, goddess of endurance. Okay, so been through a lot, learned a lot. That's where the wisdom has come from. So two. May mm -hmm. feel like. You're still able to attract what it is that you are looking for. Okay. I just want to take a look at that number two, Freya. Just so I can see what I'm... Oh. All right. Two, 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 two. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, this is about reclaiming your healing power through your sensu your sexuality. The trauma that women as a collective have suffered is deep and goes far back in time. So many women in history and today in this time on earth have experienced heinous sexual abuse and the misuse of her body against her will. And this hurts us as a collective severely. I ask you to research sexual healing as a possibility that even small occurrences of trauma may have affected you at some point in life. Some methods include wound clearing med meditations, yoni eggs, feminine rituals such as sacred dance and eye gazing. Next are the beliefs that have been instilled regarding a woman's right to exert her sexuality. The female sex shaming that has occurred is a direct byproduct of the religious influences and the implication and the implications of these beliefs have made women feel disconnected from their sexuality. This happens in the first place due to the sacred healing and creation innately occurring through sacred sex. It was made out to be dirty and impure to reduce the healing that would take place in it. It's time to come and take back that power. So, you are learning that you're in, there's nothing negative about you and your sexuality and the way you uh, are in touch or your sexual history. Those are thing, things that you had to go through, things that you learned from. They don't make you who you are, but they have propelled you forward on this journey. There are experiences that you have learned different things from, even though they may have been very dark experiences. Reintegrate the sensual energies that you hold within. Reclaim your healing power through your sexuality. So you've learned things, and I think this is saying that you should feel that you're able to move forward in another relationship. That you should not let whatever this was affect the way you go forward, right? You have learned certain things, you have learned how to discern certain things, but that does not mean that you should cut yourself off from that part of yourself. Okay, okay. There's seasons, right? The goddess of endurance. There's seasons, a time for planting, a time for harvesting. Persephone is number nine. So you have been in touch with your dark side, with your ancestors. You have been doing that work, and it's time for you to take that wisdom and be able to move forward, knowing the power that you have, the healing power that you have and that you are, and on, not only healing for yourself, but also healing for others. So, for Achilles, just to make sure, number 10 we have, for the masculine energy, Achilles, this is about vulnerability, representing the overall strength of the masculine with one perceived weakness his heel. He is depicted embracing his vulnerability. He's holding on to his ankle. This is the medicine that the collective masculine needs to be embraced for their 
innately tender, protective, and loving heart. An injustice has been done to this part of the masculine template. Just as the feminine has been repressed, so too has he. Men have been programmed to disassociate from their emotions and tendernesses for generations. Due to societal put-downs and suppression, and out of fear of ridicule and hurt, it can be difficult for men to allow their vulnerability to shine through. From a very early age, boys are told, don't cry, toughen up, man up, you're a sissy, stop being a girl. The damage has been vast and extreme. They experience various forms of this oppression. Ridicule for expressing romantic love to women, being called soft or under the thumb or whipped, then there is the expectation to be a pillar of, str of strength and to provide, to protect, to carry the brunt of the load on their shoulders. It is scary for men to open up to softness and to their vulnerability. So, for the masculine energy, they may have been fighting allowing themselves to feel the emotions. They may have been presenting themselves as strong and as a warrior and a protector and, you know, a god of battle. But, we know this is the number six, and we know six talks about love as well as war. So they're protecting that those things that they love and protecting themselves because they don't want to look vulnerable. So they could have been protecting people that they love without allowing anyone to see how hurt they were. How hurt they were. So they've been fighting for to protect themselves, their family, their turf, their home, their job, whatever it is, without letting others know how hurt and how vulnerable they have become and how how stuck. And this is a nine also, just like the Divine Feminine had a nine. His nine is stored in the reverse, so God of action, not taking any action. So they've been in touch with their ancestors also, right? And they have more to do. It's not finished. They have work to do. The Divine Feminine has planted and she's reaping. She's reaping from what she planted. But the Masculine hasn't taken any action. He's stuck. Hmm. He's stuck because he's not been in touch with his ancestors. He's not listening to his guidance. He's trying to fight the battle on his own because he doesn't want to look vulnerable. Okay, he doesn't want to look vulnerable. He doesn't want to look weak. So he's not asking for any guidance. He's not doing any of the... He's not in touch with his ancestors. Or he's afraid of what the ancestors are saying to the, him. And so maybe he's fighting that. He's fighting the messages that he may be getting the opportunity for healing that his ancestors want to bring to him. He's afraid, so he's frightened. Some of them. Whoever is drawn to this reading, this is... No. Okay. 
So what are you saying no with an exclamation point? I was just, okay. What was I saying? All right. So is he ready to take action? Should it be in the upright? Let's see. Put it back. Is he taking action? Is he listening to his guidance, his ancestors? Within the next few weeks, within the next few months. Okay. So I think this is saying there's going to be some changes. It's going to take time for the masculine energy to be able to move forward and take action and it's going to be a few months before the feminine energy is going to be able to uh, get what she has uh, reaped, right? So springtime, maybe. Um, I'm in the northern hemisphere, so a few months would be three months, a few weeks, could be three weeks, it could be nine weeks, nine months. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could be that. Okay. For some of you, I'm hearing that in nine months, there is a pregnancy that you may not be aware of yet, but you will be. Within the few next few months, you will be aware of a pregnancy. You become aware of a pregnancy. Or you will be pregnant for some of you within a few months. For the masculine, could be the same thing. Maybe within the next few weeks, he's going to be hearing about a pregnancy. Or maybe within the next few weeks, someone he's going to get someone pregnant. Okay, so the questions were, okay, let's get to the questions. Is it in keeping with God's will that the divine feminine and divine masculine remain in separation? That was the first question. So, this is where the heads are. Is it in God's will for them to remain within, to remain in separation from one another? Success and abundance. Yes, I guess so. This is what's going to bring the success and the abundance is them being separated. Okay. Within the next few months. Success within the next few weeks. Oh, bottom of the deck, romance. What? Okay, so within the next few months, there will be new romance within the next few weeks. A successful romance for the divine masculine, a successful, abundant romance for the divine feminine. With someone else. Let's see. That was the first question. So, is it in keeping for them to remain in separation? I would say yes. Um, is it in God's will for them to remain in no contact? Okay. Yonder yeah, Romance says communicate clearly. But let's just make sure. Is it in God's will for them to remain in no communication? 
remained in no communication. Meditation brings answers. Hmm. No, meditation brings answers. So I guess there's still going to be telepathic communication. between the two. And then and here it says a year from now. So meditation brings answers? No. So I guess you're not I guess they want you to remain in contact in the five D. That's your choice to do that if that's what you wish to do, I guess. Um, is it in keeping with God's will for them to move, is it in keeping with God's will to move on with their separate lives and their separate purposes? So is it in keeping to move on separately for their own life's purposes, in their own life's purposes, in their own paths? Take action. Yeah, I think so. Get it moving. It did come out in the reverse, but I'm going to take it in the upright because right now no one's taking action because they may be feeling a little sad, right? Or whatever. So, but yeah. Go on with your work. Go on with your purpose. Whatever it is that you feel that it is. Divine masculine, whatever you feel it is. Divine feminine. Go forward with your work, right? Take action. Remain, if you want to. Remain in, in uh, contact with this person if you want to. But you will get your answers through your prayers and meditation. You will be guided. Right, but they don't need you to be in physical contact with this person or in, you know, 3D communication. Is it in God's key? Is it in keeping with God's will that the divine feminine and divine masculine fall in love and unite or marry someone else going forward? Okay, let's see. <laughs> is it in the will? Is it in God's will for these people, whoever is drawn to this message and whoever it is that they are thinking of? You're ready. And it came in the reverse, but I think it's the same when you're ready. Yes, they are. Perfect timing. So, in divine timing, when you're ready, you will be in another relationship with someone else when you're ready. And it'll be divine timing. I don't think you're ready yet because it came out this way, but as soon as you're ready, it'll be the perfect time. So, what was the purpose of this exercise <laughs> what was this whole thing about what were, what were you all supposed to learn what is the lesson that the divine masculine and the divine uh, feminine were supposed to learn about life and love and whatever what was this about learning or healing for them both let me just bring this here What was this about for them? Thank you. Right. Hmm. This, what is what was this lesson about? Grief and anger. Number ten. So this is about how you handle grief. And how you handle anger. That's what this lesson was about. And
and boundary. Grief and anger. Let's see what that's saying. Number 10, boundaries is another nine, grief and anger, emotions are energy in motion, emotions, grief and anger are two emotions that are particularly difficult to allow to be in motion, it can be instinctive to fight them, to repress them, ignore them, and instead put your energy into positive focus. Here's the thing. Fighting, repressing, and ignoring emotion in any form does not make it go away. It only serves to push them down further. And that's what I was saying at the beginning about feeling what it is that you feel. It only serves to push them down further, like poison being pushed farther down into a festering wound. So, you have to allow yourself to feel this, this, this grief and this anger. You have to allow yourself to feel it. The only way to release this energy is by putting it into motion, and that is to feel it deeply to allow it to speak. You may feel like a ship in the deepest of seas at midnight in the middle of a storm being pushed around by the current, no end in sight. The only way through it is to stop fighting the waves and allow yourself to be carried by them. Fighting the waves leads to the boat filling up with water and capsizing. Ride the waves. Allow the emotions to wash over you as though they were waves. Morning will come. It always does. Though it is the only through it is the only way through it. As unsatisfying as that sounds, grief and anger may have been stigmatized. No, grief and anger have been stigmatized by society. It is time to bring these emotions out of the shadow and to reap the rewards of feeling them and lightening up your energy field bit by bit. So, a lot of the healing that we have been going through on this journey over the last five, three, two years, one year, six months, however long we've been on this journey, and you come to this point in your journey. You spend a lot of time going through those hurts, going through those traumas, trying to heal those places in your history, in your story, that may have had you stuck, right, or may have had you confused. All of those experiences, you work on that. So, this is another one that's happening right now, a new one, a new hurt, a new hurt has happened. And so now, we want to save ourselves all the trouble that we just went through by, because we pushed it away, because we ignored it, because we, you know, didn't allow ourselves to handle it in the right way for ourselves. We're not doing that anymore because now we have the tools we know how to do it, right? All the things, all the lessons, everything to this point is leading you both to the place where you learn that you have what you need, you have it within you to take care of yourself, to create boundaries, but also to allow yourself to feel grief and anger in non-destructive ways, allowing yourself to cry, allowing yourself to be angry, 
to be hurt and to express yourself. You're protecting you're protecting your se your sexuality while you're going through this grief. So you're protecting yourself from allowing yourself to be um, sexually active. You're, you're keeping that closed. Okay, you're closed off from that because of the grief and the anger. And those are the boundaries that you are you learn you're learning about. You're learning about not to use sex as a way to get through grief and anger for some of you. Or not to use sex as a punishment for some. Male and female, holding back sex as a way to express anger and grief rather than crying about it, talking about it. Yeah, that's the boundaries that you're being taught about. What happens when you establish boundaries that keep you away from your sexuality. You keep your sexuality, your those feelings, that healing locked up. You're learning about that. Okay. Wow. The healing that you could experience if you don't hold back the sexual healing. All right. Okay, so that's interesting. Interesting. And boundaries. Let me just look at that too. <laughs> Since we're doing this. Boundaries. This determines who and what you allow in your life. In your material, physical, mental, emotional, sexual, love, and spiritual. Your personal space and your energy field. What treatment you will take from others. What thoughts and what values and what opinions you allow into your being. What comfort levels you are with sexual activity. Boundaries are already a part of so many areas of our life without our knowing it. We naturally implement boundaries on a daily basis, generally according to our subconscious beliefs. Once we bring our boundaries into our consciousness, everything changes. First, decide what boundaries you want to implement. For example, if your mother interferes with your love life more than you feel is acceptable, then it's time to put a boundary in place to inhibit this behavior. Time for a truth bomb. It isn't the job of others to obey your boundaries, but it's your job to enforce them. So, did someone who you felt interfered in your love life, you know, in this relationship, you have the right to create and maintain boundaries with them. Now, if they want to just, um, you know, not honor your boundaries, that's on them, but you have the right to keep establishing that boundary with them, okay? So, you're learning about maintaining your boundaries, and you're learning about not using sex as a way to create a boundary, also. You're not using sex as a weapon, and not using sex as a way to create boundaries. Okay. Okay. All right. That's the way the message is coming. Sorry if it doesn't <laughs> make sense later. 
podcast when I listen to it. And I'll clarify it if I need to when I listen back to the message as I post it. So let's see what is what is the resolution of this situation going to be for both parties here. What is the resolution for both parties? Going forward, what is it that they're learning about themselves? What is it that they are going to walk away with? What skill are they going to have going forward that they will be able to share with the collective even? Okay. What is the lesson for all parties? These two parties, not all parties, the two parties. Hmm. Okay, you got two cards. All right. Joy and balance. Four and nine. We've got another nine again. Where they hit the table in the reverse, but this is what you're learning about. How to balance. How to work together. How to work together. How to bring balance So this is about being able to balance work and play and responsibilities. So work and responsibilities with play, with freedom. The elusive state of balance. Isn't it frustrating that you have finally reached a point of balance that you are attempting to achieve on your path only to have it go back to an imbalanced state? In a word, in a world based on duality that is in a constant state of ebb and flow, it is totally okay to move in and out of balance. Enjoy your time in the zone of equilibrium and use it to your advantage. Use it as a time to create momentum in the area of life that it applies to. So, the lessons that you learned, you're going to be able to take it into your love and romantic relationships going forward. When a state of equilibrium is reached, things tend to flow smoother and things move quicker with peace, joy, and success. So you've learned that creating boundaries and withholding sex and um, not expressing your anger and your grief and not being vulnerable, all of those things take away from the possibility for success. Stay in the present moment. Do your best to stay in the present moment. Enjoying the experience as it's happening. So not worrying about things that happened in the past. Don't be disheartened. In this realm of constant ebb and flow, even if it seems impossible to bring balance to a particular situation, it is possible. So it's a chance to be an alchemist, turning lead into gold. The amount of resistance or negative that is being experienced can be turned into the exact same amount of positive on the other end of the scale of polarity. So joy can be brought back into your life, into your situation because of the lessons that you have learned. Uh, let me just make sure that that is that. Balance and joy was nine. <laughs> I had the wrong card because I had the wrong card. Okay, so that was balance, sorry. And this is joy <laughs> number nine. 
time to put on put the foot on the brake and ease into a phase of joy. This spiritual path can be challenging and painful, especially when you become adept at being a shadow walker. A shadow shadow work is extremely important in being able to release and purge all that is holding you back from true joy. But it is also important to come up for air between and really allow yourself to experience all the wonder that this earth has in store for you to experience. When you are in the shadow, you will reach a point when you know that it's time to resurface from the depths of the darkness. So that was the Persephone, again, coming out of the darkness back into joy, back into the light, back into interacting. Okay, do something to help pull yourself out of the energy, either by going for a long walk, listening to some upbeat music, coming back into your body through stretching and yoga moves, or watch a comedy. Laughter is one of the most potent forms of healing, and tapping into your sense of humor is a wonderful way to come back into lightness and to tap into source energy and to the angelic realm. If you force yourself into too much emotional cleaning or energy at this work at one time, okay, if you force yourself into too much emotional cleaning or energy work at one time, it can actually end up being detrimental to your healing path and can slow things down. Refilling your energy field with joy, gratitude, and love after a round of purging speeds up your progress. As with anything, it's all about balance. So I think this is talking about balancing, okay, getting back in touch with your sexuality, right, not holding back yourself from enjoying um, that sexual release, right, giving yourself a chance to regain your balance and to bring back joy, and also then going back into, again, your spirituality, so you're going to learn how to balance things. You're going to learn how to make better choices. You have the tools that you have acquired to make better choices going forward. And you will find yourself given that opportunity. You will be given the opportunity for a fresh new start with someone else because you've already learned the lesson. this particular relationship, right? So let's get let's clarify. <sighs> what do we want to clarify here? All right, let's see. What's going forward? What is what? What are we looking for within the next? few weeks for the divine masculine. What is the message for him? Let's see. What what is Ooh, ooh. okay, that's a lot. <laughs> what does the divine masculine have to look forward to within the next few weeks? Eight of Swords. Okay. <laughs> what else? Let's clarify that. Eight of Swords. So you're going to be feeling stuck for the next few weeks or is he going to be coming out of that in the next few weeks let's see might see his tarot clarify this anything else on the divine masculine eight of swords what is he going to be going through within the next few weeks how is he going to be feeling Two of Pentacles and the Five of Wands. Okay. Stuck. Lots of controversy. Uh, still hesitation. Mm. Two of Swords, yeah. Two of Swords, Two of Pentacles. Still stuck. Still listening to other people, please, arguing with others. Okay, so that is where he's going to be for the next couple of weeks. For the Divine Feminine, what, within, 
for the next few months? What are you going to be experiencing? In the next, for the next couple of months, what is the Divine Feminine going to be experiencing? Mm. Healing, the star, number 17. Healing. Keeping hope, being hopeful, healing. Balancing, bringing balance, okay. And the King of Wands. Ooh. Healing with the King of Wands or bringing hope or bringing in balance with the King of Wands. Uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or someone like that. Praying for <laughs> maybe she's just praying for just praying for a man. That maybe that's what she's gonna be doing. Five of Swords at the bottom of that. Okay. Being confused, listening to a lot of different energies. But there's a four of wands at the bottom of the deck. Hmm. Let's see what this is saying. This five of swords. Five of swords. A headache. <laughs> okay, so this is conflicts. Unfair. Advantages. Losses. Building up your skills and your confidence. Hollow victories. Okay, let's see what the whole message is. Let's just read this so we can get some clarity. I'm going to do the same for the Divine Masculine, don't worry. So, King of Wands. King of Wands. is okay a natural born leader an entrepreneurial spirit ideas that can be ultra successful a creative visionary timelessness of success fire so this this is a fiery energy a leader passionate and heartfelt field we build this empire of light together so this is some one that you you feminine energy may have been praying and hoping for so Okay, so this lesson has moved you ahead. Okay, that's what the definition is. The lessons move me ahead always. So you've learned a lot from this lesson. And you are looking forward and being hopeful that you will find that person that matches your energy, that will be able to lead you, that you'll be able to rely on. A masculine energy that you'll be able to go forward with. Also opportunity for you to build an empire so you are going to use all of these lessons to manifest a healing connection that you can continue to build your empire someone that you can continue to build your empire with that you can share your load with okay so that's what's going to be going on for you in the next few months. Divine Feminine to Divine Masculine. Let's go here. Eight of Swords and Five of Wands. So, Eight of Five of Wands is competition, conflict, ambition, challenge, 
being pushed by others, brainstorming, mental jousting, aggression, adrenaline, surpassing limits, leveling up, dynamic energy, eight of swords, eight of swords, feeling stuck, a time to open your eyes to unveil the truth, having more options than you thought, an opportunity to let go of an old story. So, I'm choo I am free to choose my healing and my light. Okay, five of wands. So, standing up for themselves, their right to make their own choices. Standing up for their right to make their own choices. Again. Support others and they support me. We rise together in accelerated harmony. So, working with others to get out of this feeling bring themselves forward knowing that they have the right to make their own choices on how to go forward so they could be getting counseling they could be getting counseling not that you shouldn't but I'm saying this maybe talking to other people bouncing ideas or maybe helping others get out of this stuck situation also maybe sharing this experience with others that could be with some of them over the next few weeks. Maybe they're going to be over the next couple of weeks talking about this experience to others. All right. And maybe getting others to work together to get out of whatever this inaction is. Two of Pentacles. So maybe this is some kind of a business investment that they're going to be focusing on somebody that could be in that they could be investing with others working together so that they can get themselves out of this stuck situation to take their mind off of what's going on creating an, equi an equilibrium equilibrium in my life that allows me to be my best self so this is about seeking harmony juggling obligations so yeah this could be talking about trying to get themselves out of some kind of stuck situation it could have to do with work or finances and investing time into that or money into that so that they can balance out their finances in a way that's going to allow them to be their best selves so that's what they're going to be working on over the next couple of weeks maybe a new job or getting a promotion also something that has to do like I said an investment maybe they're going to invest their money somewhere mm. yeah something that's going to add to their their bottom line so they're looking for ways to increase their finances that could be what makes them feel vulnerable so maybe taking more action at work is what they have needed to do or taking more action in their career to go forward and stop being afraid to take a chance to go forward in their career or on their life path and for the Divine Feminine, taking those lessons and moving forward towards a passionate relationship. Someone who is a leader. Someone that they can depend on. That's not going to have them in this uh, worried situation. But using the lessons that you've learned on this journey. 5944 when I said that right so I think that's what this was about I think that's your advice going forward 
all right? So the Divine Masculine is going to work on his, he's going to continue to focus on his pentacles. He's going to continue to focus on his investments and those things that make him feel secure and not vulnerable. Um, maybe this will teach him about um, taking action when he should, you know, or delaying action. So maybe that's a lesson that he learned. He could have learned a lesson about withholding their emotions or withholding sex from you or allowing you to withhold sex from them or allowing anyone to do that for some of them on both sides. So maybe they were withholding sex from you or you were withholding sex from them or they were withholding sex from someone else or someone else did that to them. I don't know what that has to do with anyway. That's a, the sex part is what's coming out from this grief and anger and establishing boundaries for you, feminine, also for them, both of you. All of these lessons are the same for both of you, I think. You focusing on your grind, you focusing on your investments, you focusing on getting out of this stuck energy and looking forward to new passion with all of the lessons, with, with everything that you've learned, keeping your hope alive, not giving up your belief in your faith that you will find that person, that perfect partner to go on the rest of the soul's journey with. Okay, so I think that's enough. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful to someone who may have needed this this evening. I love you guys so much. I know it's not easy. I'm going through it right here with you. But there's, you know, if you need, someone needed healing, someone needed to hear this, and I'm glad to be able to share this. I learn, you learn, we all learn. And we're learning to be okay with it, right? Absolutely. So thank you very much. And I will be talking to you all shortly. I mean, I, mean, I will be talking to you all whenever the Spirit tells me to. I'm not going to promise that I'm going to be doing readings in any particular order or anything like that. The healing, the, femi the um, inner child feminine he healing um, readings that I've done over the past month or two are very important to help you get to this place or help you deal with this place so if you haven't watched those videos go right ahead and do it it goes by your zodiac sign but it's not necessarily just for Gemini or just for Scorpio or just for Leo or just for Aries read the different um, titles or just go through them all from Aquarius all the way around to Pisces and see what messages you can pick up for yourself that may be healing for you and you can share them with your partner if you choose to if not share them with other divine feminines all right but male and female we all have a feminine energy inside of us a little girl that has been <sighs> disregarded or denied or disenchanted and we're going to help her get out of that so that when you get to this place you'll be able to heal and move forward and anytime you need to come back to any of these messages on this channel or especially within those um, fairy tale tarot healing messages for the inner divine masculine and the inner divine feminine please take advantage of those Anytime. They're here for you forever. As long as YouTube is around. Okay. I have no plans on taking the channel down. Even if I don't do readings in the future. I, I, I want to allow those messages to be there. All right. But I'm not saying that I won't be doing messages. I'm sure that I will as spirit leads me. So. Oh. And do not. I'm not. I will be reaching out to you for a reading unless you're a customer of mine previously right you know me if I reach if, if if you want a reading from me you contact me but I'm probably not gonna be doing a lot of those 
But if you do, it'll be you reaching out to me and not me reaching out to you. Only if I'm responding to a question of yours. Okay, so on Instagram, any of these other platforms, uh, Facebook, whatever. I will give a free reading. I will gift a free reading. But if you want a reading from me, you need to ask me for it. And then I will contact you and you'll see me. You'll get a visual of me. All right. And you'll... Um, you'll know me all right we'll talk and we'll do it on Skype or messenger on a video okay um, but for the most part I think these messages suffice and uh, if a few people are asking for the same type of energy then I'll just do a general reading for everyone okay so thank you so very much okay stay safe don't fall for any scammers out there all right any of the readers on YouTube if they if you are reading with them, contact them on their website or on their um, YouTube page in the comment section. And if you see somebody commenting and telling you, oh, if you contact the doctor, so and so and so, he can help you, just ignore those. Okay, ignore those messages. You can report them if you want to, but uh, just deal with the reader that whose name is on that page and who you've been used to. Okay? So, be careful out there. Take care. Love you guys. Enjoy your rest of your year. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of this journey, the rest of your life. Be blessed. I love you all.